welcome to another episode of Breaking Bread. And we're going to be around Most Precious Blood Church in Little Italy, Manhattan. And I'm so excited because this is going to be our very first show outside of Brooklyn and Queens. Now, Father Jamie is going to meet us a little later on in the show, as usual, and show us some of his favorite places in the neighborhood. And I'm telling you, he knows this place like the back of his hand, so I'm really excited. Let's get started. Joe Mano, the owner of Snackies. Now, I usually don't say people's whole names, but your name is really cool, Joe Mano. So. <laughs> is Italian enough for you? Yeah, okay, very. <laughs> so tell me all about Snackies. Oh, Snackies opened about a year and a half ago. Uh, actually, a little less. It was, they opened in July. I said May, but it was July. Okay. And we got through our first summer well with our, you know, we make one of the best pizzas around. We make a homemade dough, homemade sauce, a lot of specialty pies. I'll tell right. you about that later. But and, and we featured that in Italian Isis. That's how we began. After we got through the San Janeiro Festival in September, we realized it was a little too cold for ices and we had to do something to compensate for the loss in volume. Right. And everybody knows cupcakes are the thing, so we went for it. You picked a great thing. They're all beautiful and they're all homemade as well, right? From scratch. We make our cupcakes from scratch from the beginning. Yeah. And you also are very well known for your, your cannolis. Now you're so well known for them, you told me that this year at the feast you guys ra actually ran out of cannoli cream, right? That's correct. We, we fill them fresh for people. And it drew such an audience, such a crowd, and we sold so many. By the end of Saturday night, there was no cream left. That's not a bad problem to have. Well, we had it again Sunday morning, no problem. Okay. So I think I'm going to go straight in for a cupcakes because this is what you're really well known for, and people come from all over the city to eat these. And this is a red velvet. You've been eyeing that up since you've been I here. have been. You saw me. <laughs> I, I try to play velvet. it off, but it, it's really hard. So I'm going to go straight in for this. Uh, just so you know, that has a cream cheese filling. Butter inside cream ice, too? Yes. Mm. Cream cheese on the inside and, and butter butter cream on the outside. That's a little twist on red velvet because it's usually not like that. Mm. It's good. This is delicious. This is delicious. And you're right, the frosting is lighter. Whenever you're in Little Italy and you want to stop by, just have a quick cupcake, grab a slice, you gotta come to Snackies. This is not to be mixed. Buttercream frosting, very good. So I'm finally at Bueno Note, and I hear that they've got a couple of things on the menu that you just can't find anywhere else in Little Italy. So let's go inside and find out what they are. So Nando, what do we have here? This is the trademark of the restaurant, is the stuffed artichoke. Stuff. Stuffed artichokes, stuffed with what? Breadcrumbs, garlic, uh, spices, uh, chicken broth, a touch of butter. We pour the soup on top of the artichokes and we serve it swimming. So just. You right? just scratch Ooh. all the meat from there and then you enjoy it. Mmm, this is delicious. Nice, right? Mm -hmm. People come here for that. You're very famous for this. Very famous. People love it. Now I see why. This is absolutely delicious. It's tasty. And then with the bread, the dipping is even better. Mm -hmm. Now you're also really well known for... The sangria. The sangria, which you can see by the lipstick. I was tasting it's, a little... Did you like it? Delicious. I really like that. Careful. <laughs> it grows on you. Yeah. It kind of was like, woo. First, you know, sangria is so sweet, you just start sipping it like it's a beverage. And you don't feel it. At exactly. the end of the, at the end of the, when you finish your glass, you're gonna mm. feel it. That's why I just drink a little bit. I don't want to get too carried away. I'm still working. Plus, I have to go see Father Jamie, so I don't want any. No, you don't want to go like to sangria. The, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really, really, really good. How long have you guys had this on the menu? Uh, since we started the restaurant, well, we started a few restaurants on the block, but uh, this restaurant has been here for about 13 years. Okay. And then we started from scratch. It was a butcher shop in the old times. And then we got the building and we made the restaurant and people loves it. Okay, well, I'm gonna eat a little more, but then I'm gonna go and I'm making veal sorrentina. sorrentina. Okay, and I heard that that's very simple and delicious. Very simple, very nice, very tasty. It's, it's made with a little touch of heart from our chef. Is, oh. he, the guy is fantastic. Okay. So it's, uh, it's 
eggplant, prosciutto, mozzarella, everything is saute in marsala wine and then we bake it. Perfect. People love it. So I'm gonna eat a little more and then I'm gonna get to work. Not a problem. No more sangria though. No, you can have sangria. No, 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 no. I can't focus part. in the kitchen otherwise. All right. So here I am in the trenches with Macarino, one of the cooks here, and he's gonna teach me how to make one of the most popular dishes, the veal. Sorrentino. Sorrentino. Okay, so we've already got some pre-sliced veal here. You got all everything laid out. What's step one? Uh, the step one is with the the meat we put on the flour. Okay. And then and the egg. And then the egg. Easy yep. enough. That's... Take the thinly sliced veal, put it in the. We dip in the, in the egg. Then in the egg, we just leave it there in the egg. Huh. Okay. Yep. To be a little thin. Yeah, and slices. then over here we have the. Our pan Our has pans. been preheating. Yep. With a little oil in it, right? Yes, some oil we have to put in there. Is it olive oil? Just oil, because Just we have, oil. after we, we fry it, we have to throw away. Oh. Oh, that's right, you mentioned that to me. So I got the little inside scoop first. So after they fry it, they're going to get rid of that oil. So just frying those thin slices of veal right up. And then we go the other side. It smells good already. So this is a really simple dish you were telling me, right? Yes, Not okay, complicated good. at all. How long do you cook it on each side? Uh, uh, when you see like this. When it's brown. And throw it, yeah. and then the golden like brown that, rule. We, we throw it away long way. That was fast. Yeah. And then we give a touch of marinara sauce. And marinara. When you say a touch, you mean a touch, just right just in the a, middle. Yes, a little bit. Yes. Okay. And then we, we have over here um, eggplant with mozzarella, oh. put on top, like this. And over here we put some pepper. Some salt, salt. Yep. chili and powder, some, and some butter. Butter. Yeah, and then over here we have a, a little marsala wine. wine. Watch. Woo. And Smoky over, and spicy over here, here we have a, a little beef, spice. beef broth. Yep. A little beef broth inside with the butter. So we took this thin sliced veal, little drops of tomato sauce in the center of each piece. Then we added the cheese and the eggplant, a little butter, a little we parsley on top at the end, and that's it. Yep. And you just let this cook again until what, until uh, all of like, the water? Uh, yep. It's getting... So all the, of the fluid reduces yep. all of the wine. So we're continuing to cook it just until the wine reduces a little bit, and then we're going to put it where? Up here? Up here to, to melt the mozzarella. From the top down. And it's ready. Perfect. We put the on top. And that's it. So here you have it. This is that's Veal. Veal Sorrentino. Veal Sorrentino. Thank you for teaching me how to make this. I'm gonna go make it at home tonight. What do you think? <laughs> you think I can idea. handle it? Of course. It's easy to Okay, now it's time for me to go taste this and tell you how good it tastes because I know how good it smells. So now here's my favorite part. I get to taste the veal sorrentina that I made in the kitchen just a couple minutes ago. Now I'm really glad that this is a smaller plate because I still have to meet Father Jamie a little later on and there's a lot more eating to do. For now, a girl will do what a girl has to do. So. Let's get some of this Marsala wine butter sauce on here. Mm. This is delicious. And I wasn't so sure about the cheese and the eggplant on top of the veal. It was actually very, very good. Mm. You definitely won't be disappointed when you come to Buena Noche and order this. And if you're like me, you're going to be eating a lot of other places and you'll still have room for more. Wow, that veal was perfect. Not too much, not too little. Because I still have to go meet Father Jamie and we've got a lot more eating to do. You're coming with me, right? Hey, Father Jamie. Hey, Tati, how you doing? Good. Are you hungry? Yeah, you know I had a little something, but I still got some room left. Well, I hope you're in the mood for some seafood Italian style. Like seafood Italiano? Yes, and we're gonna eat at Vincent's. Okay, I'm up for it. Let's, Let's go. go. Original 
traditional Vincent's with who else but Vinny. Right. <laughs> Thank you for having us. You're welcome. I can't get over how long this place has been here. You gotta give me the whole background. Well, we started in, uh, started with a push cart out in front, 1896. An actual push cart though, push right? Cart. Was there a building here? There was a building here. Okay. Yes. In about uh, 1904, they decided to come inside and open a small restaurant, which we're sitting in right now. This was the size of the restaurant. So the building's been here for almost 160 years. Right. The restaurant's been here for over 100. And yeah. how long have you been here? 90? I mean, I mean yeah, <laughs> not yet, I'm not that old. <laughs> uh, 25 years here uh, at the location. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So you guys are really known for your sauce. Give me the, that's all we're hearing about. The sauce at Vincent's, the sauce at Vincent's. And you got meat, sweet, sweet. With no pepper. Okay. And we got medium, which is a little spicy. And we have hot, that's very hot. That's the one I like. And your lips burn. You burn, oh, but it's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I like my sauce real hot. You like hot food in well, general, this is so hot. I think I'm gonna go You're to gonna that enjoy one. This one. Yeah. I'm gonna try that. Mm -hmm. So Father that's Jamie, great. you know this menu pretty well. You know this neighborhood, this place. What are you going to get in there and cook? I guess we always like to surprise you, Tati. All right. But it's one of the most popular dishes. Okay, I love surprises. Vincent, you ready to go? Yes. To work? Yes. Let's go. I'll just stay on coffee break. Of like course. Sort of... I mean, you always, you know, get the better, better half of the mm -hmm. deal. <laughs> I love it when you work, Father Jamie. I just kick right. back. We'll be Sip back coffee. soon. <laughs> Eat my appetizers. Call my mom. <laughs> Well, we're here in the kitchen of Vincent's restaurant with Vincent, and what are we preparing today? Lobster for the oven. Oh, one of your most popular dishes, right? Right. One of my favorites, too. Right. So what do we have here? We have uh, the pot to start off with. Okay. We have the olive oil we're going to put in. All right. That's a lot of olive oil, huh? Yep. <laughs> the more olive oil, the better the sauce tastes. Okay. We're going to let that warm up a little bit. All right. Then we're gonna put our hot pepper in. Nice and spicy. Right. Okay. What do you have there, you have? We have uh, the garlic already okay. ground up in a blender. Okay. And we have some onion. Okay, we're gonna add. Whoa, that's a lot of garlic. Two, two spoons of garlic. This is about uh, equivalent to a tablespoon and a half. We're gonna do the same with the onion. We're gonna stir it up. You get, get a smell little, right away as soon right. as it starts. Uh, we're gonna wait till it gets a little, start getting brown, then we're gonna put the hot pepper in. Okay. Now this is served over pasta, right? Yes. So over the pasta linguine. Will be linguine. Yeah. Okay. Now we're gonna put the pepper in. We're gonna put one, two, two uh, heaping spoons. Stir it up into the garlic and the wow. onion. So this dish, you need a lot of bread also to even oh, all yeah. that hot pepper. Yeah. Well, it cooks up when you see it get brown. Okay. Then we're gonna put our tomato in. Now that's crushed tomato? Actually, I'm gonna put the paste in first. Tomato paste. Right. Now that's a lot thicker than the yes. crushed tomatoes. Yes. We're gonna use uh, about three heaping spoons. Now that's got to break down into the hot oil. It's evaporating into the paste. The olive oil that's in the pot, and it's mixing in with the, uh, the onion, the garlic, and everything, and the hot pepper. Smelling better by the minute. Right. <laughs> We're going to put the whole can of tomatoes into the pot. Wow. We're gonna add the basil. The more basil, the better flavor you get. We're gonna add the parsley. Two pinches of parsley. We're gonna add a little salt. Okay. A little black pepper. Two pinches. Let's you go. gotta be careful. After all that red pepper, you were yeah, wearing well, the black, pe black pepper. pepper? Yeah. <laughs> okay, everything is in there. The basil, the uh, parsley. We're gonna add a little red wine. Okay. Is that a Chianti? Uh, what is it? Uh, this is a Chianti. Okay. Stir it 
stir it up, get it in the sauce. We could add the lobster tails first. Lobsters first, okay, I'll throw these in for you. Now we could add the, uh, the shrimp. Shrimp. Now you can put your clams in. Clams? With all that clam juice, look at that. Right. Wow. Yeah, now you can put the mussels in. Now the mussels doesn't have too much juice in it. So no, mussels no much. You can see the lobster, the tails, the shrimp, the mussels and clams. Wow. Well, Tati's gonna love this dish. <laughs> So you cover that and you have to let that cook for about 45 minutes. Right. All right. Well, now that we have prepared the lobster fra diablo, we'll go into the dining room and taste that delicious sauce. Thank you, Father Thank Jamie. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. Father Jamie, I thought we were going to have one surprise. You brought a whole spread out here. Well, in Italian, we say abundanza. What does that mean? Plenty of food. Abundance. Oh, it's okay with me. <laughs> so we have a little toast first? Yeah. To Vincent's. Thank you, Vincent. Father Jamie. <laughs> To lots of food. Let's just start eating. <laughs> seafood salad. Cold seafood so salad. So is this the this is the spicy sauce that you told this me is about? The spicy hot sauce. Okay. Now I know spicy, so I'm gonna dig right into this and tell you guys how spicy it is. How do you like it? It's delicious. <laughs> and if you like that, this is the spicy scongili mm. with the spicy sauce. Hot sauce, as they say here. Vincent, a little, mm -hmm. or you have this all the time. A little bit, sure. Delicious. Now mm. they serve that with the fusilli, mm. and that is a, a hard mm. bread that the sauce you dip in, and they pour it on top, and it absorbs all that sauce. Fusilli, right? Fusilli. Fusilli. I'll take one of those. Delicious. And you let the sauce just soak right in before you eat it. I'll say the calamari is perfectly crispy. <laughs> Not soggy at all. The squinchili is so tender. Now, it always has a reputation of being rubbery. This is really, really tender. Like a piece of chicken, a piece of good chicken. Now, we saved the best for less. Mm. This is the seafood fra diablo that we prepared. And Tati, you're going to get the first piece of lobster. Okay. How's that lobster tail? And we'll serve this with a little linguine. And then, how about a little clam? And we'll put this here right on the side for you. Perfect. This, you know, this is why I love it when Father Jamie cooks. <laughs> Not just one thing comes out, <laughs> lots of surprises, and all of this is so delicious. How about our seafood salad? Excellent, mm. excellent. We got a little bit of that, and uh, nice and fresh. And you have lemon in there, olive oil, mm. garlic, 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 celery. When I was a pleasure, kid, we pleasure. had this only at the holidays, Christmas and Easter. That was a specialty, the seafood salad. Right? It's it always a time. holiday on breaking bread. <laughs> <laughs> so when you are in Little Italy and you want some delicious Italian seafood, you gotta come to the original Vincent's. Try it for yourself. Restaurants on every corner. Yeah, and of course everybody knows you as usual. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tati, I know a place where we can end this episode on a sweet note. But you know I love sweets. Ferrara's Bakery Shop. Is that that place you told me about that's been here for like forever? Over 100 years. Well, if it's been here that long, it's got to be good. Let's go. Let's get in there. Okay, so here we are in Ferreras with Ernest, the executive chef and one of the owners here. Now it's not Ferreras pastry shop or bakery or even espresso bar, it's just Ferreras and people know what you're talking about, right Father Jamie? That's it, when you come down to Little Italy, you have a nice dinner, you have to go to Ferreras for dessert. I mean, how can you not? Look at, look at all these goodies in here. <laughs> We've got tiramisu, which is my favorite. And, but what are these? Now this is something special, right? Struffoli. Struffoli. Now normally, these are only made during the holidays. We wanted to give something festive to our guests that come, and normally you can only get them during the holidays. I thought it would be nice. And you can actually walk and eat this easily. Ah, I oh, see. Oh, so then during the feast, people can eat them and right. like, they almost like the Zeppelin. Yes. <laughs> so stop by, get this, and keep moving through the feast. One of my favorite desserts is the Bao Bao Rum, but with the cream. I've never had it with 
This is the rigotta, which is a cannoli cream. Okay. Which is a rigotta cream, chocolate chips, citrus fruit, and sugar. Father JB, uh, I already see the little rum juice pouring out rum. of this thing. Wow, look at this. Mm. That looks good. I'm sure you eat this all the time. Right? Oh, love it. So now, I have to be honest, this, everything here is delicious, but Father Jamie's very favorite dessert in the whole world is cano are, are cannolis. It's something that you are totally famous for, right? Absolutely. And you're going to teach me how to... Fill a cannoli. Fill a cannoli, Father Jamie. We have a Jamie. specific way a cannoli is supposed to look. Okay. Okay. When, when you look done. at our cannolis, you can tell they're for our cannolis. Okay. We'll say who filled those cannolis in the morning when they're not ready. All right. So, Father Jamie, will you come and give me support? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. So, let's get in there and get to work. All right, so we're in Ferrara's kitchen, and I just found out that we're one of the first people to ever videotape in here, right? Absolutely. I feel very special. You feel honored today. I know. Well, <laughs> Father Jamie's favorite dessert, first time in here, and I'm going to feel like a pro, like a real foodie once I learn how to do this, because I've wanted to learn this for a long time, and I'm going to learn the right way to do it, right? Absolutely. What's, what do we do first? So I'm holding the bag, because mm -hmm. we don't want the cream to come out and get us dirty. Okay. So we break it into two pieces. I pinch it. And I twist it, and I twist the top. Aha, pinch now the twist. top is twisted so the cream can't come out. I'm going to hold it under my arm. Okay. And now I have here, which I can squeeze, but I'm going to come into the center at a little bit of an angle and fill it and then wipe Aha. it. Aha. And then I flip it in my hand, and I make sure I catch that other half. People get very upset I on enough. I And we wipe. Now you make all the shells here. We make the shells in Perth Amboy at our factory. But all homemade, you, you, all you homemade. do yes. yourself. Now, I'm looking at a very special ch shell. Hand yes. dipped in chocolate, right? These are our hand dipped chocolate cannolis. Each one's hand dipped, dried, wow. cooled. Well, you must need a lot of hands. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Now, you don't only make the shells for yourself, but you supply restaurants and uh, bakeries I'm, I'm throughout the country, try. is that right? Yes. How many, shells the country do you, Canada. how many shells do you prepare a year? On a good day, we'll make approximately 42,000 shells. In one day? In one, one day? day? Oh, yes. my goodness. Well, this thing is kind of heavy. Yes. So, so you're it ready. Good. There you go. <laughs> I will put it underneath this arm. Oh, put it underneath this arm? OK. There you go. All right. Tuck it up. Now aim for the center. Center. And that right. good angle? Yep. And you're going to draw it out. Push harder, 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 and then. Great. You missed a little oh, bit. A little bit. Okay, okay, okay. I missed a little bit on the Very side. good for the first one. Right. So the reason you twist it is to get the air out. Because you don't have any air in Almost. there. Almost. Not quite like yours, but all right, one out. more. That's why we can tell who's the best. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You guys, when you walk in in the morning, if it doesn't look right, right. the first we, question we is... We ask is who filled the cannolis. All right. And you see each cannoli is filled. And don't be cheap, Tati. No, I'm not. There's a lot of cream in there. Now that I like that's my like a kind of okay. filled. Yeah. Grip. Push hard, push hard, push hard, push hard. Okay. All right, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm sure if I did this for about half a day, they'd It'd be, be right. almost as good as yours. In 40 years, you're going to be a professional. In 40 years. <laughs> now you also have miniatures, also, right? Yes. Okay. Actually, my father developed the miniature in like 1979, and I thought it was blasphemous. Really? I thought they were around longer than that. No. no. And they're, they're a huge hit because. We can have a mini chocolate cannoli and a mini sfogliatella and a mini eclair, and you have a little bit of each, which really made sense. And he looked at me that day like I was crazy, and he was right. This is very, miniatures have become much more loved than full pastry, because you can have more. Well, you want to try everything, too. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Like, when you come into a place like this, you want some of everything. I was like, tiramisu, I want the baba ricotta. You want, you know, if you've got a little taste, because that's all you really exactly. need, right? So when you are in Little Italy, you've got to come to Ferreras. You won't be disappointed, and he won't serve you the cannoli that I filled. It'll be gone by then. Or maybe we'll eat it now. Uh -huh. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. Me too. Father JV, I think Little Italy was the perfect place for us to do our very first show outside of Brooklyn and Queens. We sure had a lot of restaurants to choose from. We did. Maybe next time, Chinatown. Okay, I'm ready. All right. <laughs> so to learn more about this episode, go to our website, netny.net slash breakingbread. I'm Tati. And I'm Father Jamie. See you next time on Breaking Bread.